You haven't found your way here by accident. It's a unique and meaningful connection meant to deliver the impactful message of Apostle Joshua Selman to your doorstep. This message carries the potential to not only bless you, but also inspire you for greatness. Open your heart wide and allow your mind to embrace the richness of this transformative message. Before we delve further, I extend a warm invitation for you to actively engage with this significant message. Join in by liking the video, sharing it with those in your circles who might find it beneficial, and subscribing to our channel for a consistent flow of insightful content. Your support is genuinely appreciated and plays a crucial role in our ability to continue sharing these meaningful messages. In the name of Jesus, I'm telling you now, everything Satan has been whispering to your ears that did not come from scripture, we decree and declare, may those sounds cease in your life. Don't let the 20 Naira trousers deceive you. The person inside is a company that is rising. Don't be deceived that after the grace, while others are hopping into their cars, God bless them. And you are walking, after such a powerful message and you are asking so did I fall down for you are joking you don't know what entered your spirit the Bible says now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear if you had seen some of us 15 20 years ago and they told you this version of us exists in that version you will not believe it do you know the other versions that are still in you you have seen the weak one thank God you have seen the weak one once and for all so that every other thing you see is the strong one evolving yes, sir. do you believe what you are hearing and of God I know you've not started ministry but it doesn't mean the call is not there you think we're always celebrated no I taught my dear people in Zaria you walk out your own salvation it does not start with doing it starts with believing something about yourself when you go through storms you lose many things and it brings you pain can i tell you losing truly brings pain there are people who have lost loved ones there are people who have lost offices there are people who have lost things there are people who have lost opportunities there are people who have lost relationships there are people who have lost certain access certain doors it brings a lot of pain I know someone who, true story, our, you know, the person had um, an accident and he had to quickly come out, but the car was damaged, you know, the, the, the gas was already leaking and he watched his car burn. There was nothing he could do. There was no way, there was no use trying to stop it. He stood there, he was safe, just a few bruises, but he watched the car burn right in front of him and all that was left was just the metals there. Everything. He left home with a healthy car, happy, smiling, and by noon, it was just the carcass of that car that was left there. Have you lost something in your life? Then you understand what pain is about. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. There are people who have lost loved ones. It's taken them years. There are people who have lost opportunities. How about jobs? I remember someone who sent me a text. They received a letter rejoicing and then they got another letter again saying for whatever reason that initial letter had been terminated they are reviewing things within the office can you imagine after planning preparing to travel abroad rejoicing that a miracle has come a good salary structure you've started planning in your mind oh with this money my children will go to this suddenly another mail comes this is why the lord brought you tonight I want to show you what to do with storms. Storms, for many of us here tonight, whilst you are listening to me, it has affected your vision. You were once a visionary man. You were once a visionary woman. With precision, you could discuss any matter as far as purpose and destiny is concerned. You knew where you were going, but storms just arose and it beclouded your vision. Now you have no idea. For some of you, you came here for Koinonia for this miracle service and your first prayer request is to at least find a bearing. Do you know that storms sometimes can so affect you you do not even know where in the sea you are you don't know you cannot find your way you will need God to help you by use of a compass to even locate where you are within the sea 
Some of us are rigmaroling around destiny. We've not been able to get our bearing. Not because you are careless. Not because you're unspiritual. It's just the reality of storms. They have arisen and distracted your sense of vision. How about visibility? Only God knows how many people would have located you by now. And you would have used the leverage of their relationship and it would have accelerated your path towards destiny. Except that storms became so hazy, they passed you and did not know you needed their help. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? It is a terrible thing to shout for help and not have anyone help you simply because the noise of the storm is louder than the noise of your voice. You are shouting for help and yet people cannot hear you. Or you are speaking and they cannot hear you. Maybe there's a man of God here I'm speaking to. You have been speaking the counsel of God. You are sincere, uncompromised, with integrity, loving the Lord. Perhaps you are a businessman doing business with the dignity of integrity. Perhaps you are a family person running your home the best that you know and the best that you can. Except that the voice, the sound of the wind and the waves has so overwhelmed the sound of your efforts. Such that the best that you do cannot even be seen relative to the sound of the storm. And then for many people, you've been moving like a snail, moving like a tortoise as far as destiny is concerned because it has so impeded your pace when you started you were firing on all four cylinders and based on your plan certain things in destiny should have actualized but storms arose and now it's limited your impact in business in family in ministry you seem to just be crawling barely getting by why am i telling you all this because the one who calmed the storm is in this place tonight I'm announcing to you not just to remind you of the things you already know that the storms have done. I'm about to introduce him shortly. But let's appreciate the fact that the storms have done damage to people. So that when he shows up, the he being Jesus, you will appreciate that which he brings. And you will watch with shock and wonder as he tells the storm, Shalom, be still. This is why you came here tonight. If you do not know what the storms have done, when Jesus shows up, you may be careless about receiving from him. Sometimes it's good to let you see what situations through storms have done to you so that your heart can be open. You can say, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Many of you are living in fear. Do you know it's a terrible thing to live in fear? You cannot, fear erodes your sense of joy, your sense of peace. There is no optimism. Your life is stagnated, stunted. There's nothing drives you. There are people who, as young as they are, there is no passion, no zest, no zeal, nothing at all. You discuss anything about life, they are not interested. Why? Because some storm have arisen. If someone, respectfully speaking, who has, say, stage four cancer, and you come and you're speaking with the person, you tell the person, listen, we have an estate project, and right now we're going to build an estate. While you are talking, the person will just be looking at you. Because the doctor has told the person, you are two weeks left by the normal medical calculation. And here you are as a sincere business partner, charging that person and saying, we'll do great things. Or perhaps as a man of God, you're saying we'll go to the nations and that person is telling you, listen, I have just two weeks to leave, except a miracle happens. Your vision deflated, you live perpetually in fear, perpetually in fear, perpetually in fear. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. The psalmist had his own fear. He was compassed round about many, many times 
that man fought many battles the psalmist was not just a king he was not just a worshiper the psalmist was a warrior he fought so many battles to a point that when it was in his heart to build God a house God said it's a good thing however your hands have shed too much blood I will not allow you with the same hand to build me a temple and he gathered the material together to allow his son Solomon to build the temple the temple would have been built by David but David lived a life fighting enemies everybody hated him left right and center right from when he was a teenager David enjoyed the presence of God but one thing he was not free from from a long time was wars and enmities there were enemies everywhere he had to write some tree he said many are they that rise up against me he says many are they that say where is your help he says there is no help for him in God this was not a song this was a testimony and there are many of us who are like David you leave Lagos to Abuja there is another set of attack waiting for you you relocate to UK two weeks you run back because the trouble there the one here looks better to solve all kinds of problems he says many not few are they that rise up against me and there are people saying there is no help for him again mm. he says I lay me down and I slept to a point that sleeping was a problem how many people cannot sleep now because you are afraid of the call that wakes you could it be the call of a bad news could it be the call that someone is there you finally lost you are waiting for a court verdict you do not even know if there are people who are walking but they don't know how else how old or how, how much time they have working as free men because there is some court verdict somewhere and any moment the verdict may come and if it comes against you you may spend decades in the prison it's a terrible thing to live in fear some of you have come tonight with medical reports as i said to come with your prayer requests and your points of contact others were coming with land certificates but there are people who have come with a death sentence lifting it before god and say lord show me mercy and like hezekiah extend my life i announce to you again there is he that can calm the storm the disciples even at their best may not have the ability to calm the storms but he can calm the storms is someone learning this is the miracle service don't be distracted it is the word that comes into your spirit that builds you the miraculous operates upon the wings of the hearing of faith there is something you need to hear that activates possibilities releasing the anointing commanding the healing praying over the request that is something that God can do in a moment but this foundation of the word becomes the basis of your stability even in the times that we live in when you are tested and you shake and you chicken out it is because your foundation is not strong hallelujah so storms bring losses and pain now Jesus taught us something very profound that in dealing with storms I wrote here rebuking the wind or the spirit as I have taught you should be your first action please look up one of the most classic information we need to learn about storms is that storms are made of two elements please look up storms are made of first the wind and then the water or the waves are we together I have taught you here that the water is the visible part of the storm that is the one that can shake the boat that is the one that can shake your destiny the water there talks about the physical environment the physical situation but that powering that water is the wind usually the invisible part the spirit that is behind what is driving your life to perdition to pain to fear and if you are dealing with storms and your focus is just the water meaning the office situation meaning the situation of your health or your marriage you are dealing with the storm wrongly in dealing with storms the first approach is the wind before the water hallelujah the Bible tells us that Jesus verse 39 when he arose the Bible never said he rebuked the water no the water was only a slave the water was a puppet to the wind if the wind were calm the water will also be calm if the wind were boisterous the water will reflect it that means what is happening in your office is not an office issue it's a spirit issue 
Listen very carefully. What is working in your finances? There may be a place where you are neglecting the laws of finances, but more than that, it's not just a financial issue. It can be a spirit issue. Powering every storm that you see is the wind. The Bible says Jesus rebuked the wind. He did not rebuke the water. The water does not necessarily need to be rebuked. The water is a reaction. The anger in your office is a reaction. The antagonism and the enmity among people is a reaction. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. We deal with storms by rebuking the wind, then speaking to the water. Rebuking the wind, then speaking to the water. One more time. Rebuking the wind and speaking to the water. Because the wind usually typifies spirits. There are spirits, elemental spiritual forces that are back of the pain, the tragedy, the rep repetitive circles in people's lives and most times because we are usually sensual in dealing with the matters of life we focus only on the water so for instance you keep discussing the business why is this favor happening around my life i'm a hard-working businessman why is it that i will get an information that by next week the contract is coming only for me to find out that it's been given to someone else because if you focus on the rage of the sea and forget that the sea is only a victim of the wind storms i repeat again are made up of winds it is not the anger or the problem between a husband and a wife. That is just the sea. I can assure you there is a spirit behind it. The disfavor that happens in your life, surrounded by helpers, yet ignored by the same. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of headache. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of unemployment. Watch this. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of your finances and all of these issues. He goes to the spirits that are behind them, masquerading behind a lot of things. Whilst you are holding your certificate, dropping it from table to table, office to office, there are spirits raging all kinds of things. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are certain winds that need to be rebuked. For someone, that wind has shifted your family from joy to pain. You have found yourself moving from one place to the other. All kinds of things have happened, swaying your boat. And you are in fear right now. Water has even gotten into the boat. And they walk Jesus. Don't forget that those guys were farmers. Carest thou, not that we perish. Hallelujah. Jesus teaches us how to deal with storms the first thing to do is that there is a spirit behind that hatred nobody comes out of nowhere it's a joke take throw away all that that superstitious belief when you just because you saw David in front of Goliath for the first time does not mean that was his first time of fighting I'm saying this because in this season God is coming to this church and there are people whose lives will change overnight. Don't be surprised. Don't say they just came out of nowhere. Find out their participation. Faithfulness in prayer meetings. Faithfulness in Bible study. Even when it's not convenient. And God is saying, I'm watching you. Ah, God sees all. God sees. The second thing God rewards is faithfulness. There are many people admiring estates and mansions and yet the one room you are staying in is not, is, it does not look like you are grateful to God for giving you that. If your one room, are we together now? You keep, it is dirty, it's unkept and you say in the name of Jesus, I know I'll be an estate owner. God is love but he's not a fool. You prepare for where you are going by being faithful where you are. Please hear me. You prepare for where you are going by being faithful where you are. I know God will give me an anointing to raise the dead someday. I will speak to nations someday. No. Speak to the two people before you with sincerity and faithfulness. Pastor the ten people. But nobody will see me to reward me. No problem. There is an all-seeing eye of this one who calls himself a rewarder. 
even Anna the prophetess who hid in the temple and nobody saw her Jesus made sure in his intelligence that reference was made to her also you never count those who played a role in Jesus' life and ignore that woman please hear me many people are unfaithful you may not be a sinner but unfaithfulness aborts your potential are we together now to experience greater things and greater rewards today by the privilege of God's grace many people see what God is doing through our lives and you know very interesting how many people think we're just lucky and I tell them lucky go and find out the story for many years I played the keyboard for someone who used to have a prison ministry they, they used to preach for they, they were part of the people who went to preach when Obasanjo was in prison it was my own small keyboard I carried it by myself and I trekked to a small hotel where they were using never did anybody ever tell me thank you you may have heard it in my teachings the only thing I ever got was one bottle of Fanta and one cassette and yet I did it sincerely because I love the Lord nobody comes out of nowhere it's a joke take throw away all that that superstitious belief when you just because you saw David in front of Goliath for the first time does not mean that was his first time of fighting I'm saying this because in this season God is coming to this church and there are people whose lives will change overnight don't be surprised don't say they just came out of nowhere find out their participation faithfulness in prayer meetings faithfulness in Bible study even when it's not convenient and God is saying I'm watching you ah, God sees oh God sees One day you will see someone who is a cleaner just cleaning the chairs. The day is time for God to lift you. Someone will come here and say, young man, what are you doing? You are a young man and you are cleaning the church. Yes, sir. What did you study? I studied ABC. Call this number tomorrow. And in two weeks you will hear that he's working in a top oil and gas firm. And people say he was lucky. <clears throat> Listen, when it was time for Isaac to get a wife, when it was time for Isaac to get a wife, the Abraham sent a servant and when he came, he said, Lord, I am praying. Many young ladies come to fetch water here, but I am praying that I will meet the person I meet who is faithful, doing the routine of faithfulness as a woman. Let it be that that is Abraham's wife. As soon as he got there, he met Rebecca at the point of faithfulness. There are many things you lose through unfaithfulness. Let me tell you the truth. You can be free from sin, but if you are not faithful, there are many things you will still lose as though you are a sinner. There are many people today who have qualified for promotion but cannot be promoted because the executives know that by longevity you are here but sincerely is going to be a a minus to that organization to promote you please say after me in the name of jesus i obtain grace to be faithful apostle my own work is just to clean the pulpit do it sincerely as unto the Lord knowing that you are serving the Lord Christ and knowing that your reward is sure my own is to scrub toilets while I'm scrubbing it people will come and be saying all kinds of things don't worry service and faithfulness in service is a deep mystery for rising to untold realms in the spirit run away from people who become great and don't have a track record of service they are dangerous Elisha, a man who carried the double portion of Elijah's anointing. The Bible said he was the one who poured water upon the hands of Elijah. Are we learning? Today, there are many, many families that are willing their inheritance 
not to the biological children but to someone else who is not even connected to them but has been faithful serving faithful serving hallelujah i had the opportunity to pray one time quite some time ago for someone to pray on their will and it he gave me an opportunity to read it before you will seal it and i saw a sizable portion that he will to someone knowing he had only three children i said why did you do this and he said this young boy you see he will take a bullet for me that if today i'm not i'm i trust this boy more than i trust my own children the hymn writer says may the lord depend on you may you be so faithful that god can depend on you no i i know that this man is here he will be faithful the first thing God rewards is a passionate pursuit, a diligent pursuit for God. The second thing God rewards, and let me tell you the truth, everything that God rewards, men also reward. In fact, the way God rewards is by using men. So what is applicable as far as your relationship with God is concerned is also applicable within your work as far as man to man is concerned faithfulness is someone learning in galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 still speaking about faithfulness galatians 6 and verse 9 the bible encourages us to not be weary in well doing do not be weary while doing good new king james will say it says for in due season we shall reap if we faint not or new king james says if we do not lose heart that means there are times that well-doing does not look rewarding for the short time you can keep doing a lot of things and it looks like people are demeaning you downplaying you maybe this is a word for someone you are saying i'm about to compromise i'm tired i've been a nice person and i've been cheated i would have had two houses today if i just quietly collected the bribe i didn't and god looked at me as if he didn't see me the next time that money comes around the table God, it will not be my fault. I won't let it pass. Listen, let me tell you the truth. It pays to be faithful. The rewards of faithfulness does not come every day. But the day it comes is areas, is accumulated together. First Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. First Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. I'll tie up one more point and then we'll pray let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God Paul says next verse moreover he says it is required in stewards that one be found faithful I'll do as it beats me whatever the cost I'll be a true soldier I'll die When a soldier dies in active service, they give them the gun salutes, even to their corpse, because they were faithful to the end. They kept their vow. Faithfulness. I am certain that the sermons you've embraced have been a wellspring of blessings, lifting your life and igniting a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a heartfelt invitation for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel ensuring you remain connected and never miss any upcoming videos by activating the notification bell. Your subscription transcends a mere click. It symbolizes a dedication to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled odyssey with us as our channel strives to become a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and steadfast believers. We staunchly believe in the transformative prowess of God's Word and our objective is to disseminate messages that deeply resonate with the essence of your soul. Become a part of our community, subscribe, and let the radiant light of divine wisdom, your presence is integral to this uplifting journey, and may the abundant blessings of God overflow in every facet of your life. Amen. Stay connected with us across all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel 
and explore more on our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Gratitude fills our hearts, and may God's abundant blessings continue to grace your life abundantly.